Guys, welcome back. It is Racer X, and today I've got a fun little sort of comparison type video for you. Um, those of you that actually follow my channel may be aware that I recently picked up this 2020 uh, Mustang uh, GT, obviously with the five liter uh, Coyote engine, and uh, it drives way, way different than Mrs. X's 2019 Challenger Scat Pack. But as a daily, I'm really enjoying this car. Um, but I do want to talk today about uh, something a little bit different. Obviously, having owned the Challenger now for what, like a year and a half, um, I'm already already noticing some big differences and some things I like better about the Challenger. And today I want to give you eight things that I actually like better about the Challenger Scat Pack uh, when compared to the Mustang GT. So it should be a fun one, guys. Also, if you are new to my channel, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button for me. I have so much great content coming up this year. It's going to be a fun one. Also, follow me on uh, Instagram and we are off. We got the thousand horsepower helmet. Well, the first thing I want to talk about, obviously, when you compare these two cars and what I like better about the Challenger is the fact that the back seats in the Challenger are they're just bigger. The Challenger is a bigger car. So when you go to get in the back seats of these, now I realize not everybody buys, everybody buys these cars for the back seat room, but the Challenger is just an overall bigger car. So when you get in the back seat of the Mustang, if you can get back there, it is a very cramped feel. If you're a full-size adult, your head will hit the top of the car or the glass there. Um, but in the Challenger, it's actually not really that hard to get into the back of the car. And then once you're back there, um, it's actually reasonably comfortable. So for a two-door car, both these obviously being two doors, um, the Challenger is hands down more comfortable to sit in the back of. Let me show you. So here you have the interior of the Mustang GT. A very, very comfortable car to sit. I love the Recaro seats in this thing. Uh, so for the driver and passenger, it's actually quite nice. Now, I've got to kind of reach back here and show you, but the back seats here, they are uh, they are quite small. There's almost no room really between the seats here, as you can see. Um, and then uh, even once you're back there, the way you're elevated, uh, your head pretty easily reaches the glass there because of the slant in the back window. Uh, so definitely uh, something to consider. And as we jump over to the Challenger, Things change a little bit, so uh, go ahead and open that bad boy up. Obviously, the seats in this car are just bigger. Um, I do like where this is positioned a little better. And then when you go to get back here, this thing slides forward, and you just there's just more room in this car. It's just a much bigger back seat, a much more comfortable place to sit, and it's really not even that hard to get back here. So uh, definitely edge to the Challenger. The second thing I want to talk about is actually the trunk of the car. So, as, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter what trim it is, but just when you look at the Challenger versus the Mustang, you're going to kind of run into the same issue. But on the trunk, you can see that the Challenger is actually, it's not only got a nice size trunk for a, a sports or a muscle car, but um, the opening for the trunk is actually quite big and it's easy to get things in and out of that space. Now, when you jump over to the Mustang, um, things change a little bit because, as you can see, the trunk is actually not a bad size. It's actually a pretty decent sized trunk. However, because of the shape of the car, you're pretty restricted in how big this opening is. And even when I was trying to put a tire in here earlier, I had to be very, very careful and just kind of wiggle the thing in there. It just was not an easy thing to do because this shape, not only is it just kind of odd, but it's just sort of narrow. So the trunk space in the Mustang, um, once you get stuff in there, you're okay. But in terms of just being able to kind of get it down in, it is way more of a challenge. And I would say this opening is literally about half the size of what it is in the Challenger. So something to think about there. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is something that uh, maybe isn't a big deal to a lot of people, but it's just sort of strange, okay? So when we look at the Challenger, you can see that you've got these kind of struts that lift the hood up for you. It just makes things easier. It's a big, long hood. Um, most modern cars have something similar. Now, when you look at the Mustang, keep in mind, this car is brand new, and um, these cars can sticker up into the mid-50s, guys, and you still get the same equipment. You get a prop rod for the hood, and the hood on this car is actually not that light, surprisingly. Um, um, but believe it or not, you still have to lift the hood up by yourself and just go ahead and prop that thing up. And uh, while that may not be a huge deal, it is a little bit strange that a car that costs this much money, um, you don't even get hood struts with. So uh, definitely something uh, that <laughs> Challenger has that the Mustang does not. 
The fourth thing I'd like to talk about actually has to do with the engines and the engine bay. So when you look at the five liter Coyote, the Mustang, you can see everything is in here quite nicely, but it's uh, a little bit crowded in here. There's a lot going on in a relatively small space. And this being a dual overhead cam engine, even though it's a five liter, it's smaller by displacement. Um, this engine actually is pretty large in size. It's got big heads on it. Obviously you've got four cams in there and there's just kind of a lot going on under the hood of this car. So if you're the average guy who wants to kind of work on something in your driveway, um, not a lot of room to work around this particular engine. Not to say you can't do it, but it's just it's just a very compact uh, space to work. Now, when you jump over to the Challenger, this being a bigger car, you've got a you know, you've got a longer hood on it. You can see there's a lot of room around this engine to work. Um, even though this is larger by displacement, 6.4 liters, um, I would say the engine isn't really any bigger when you just look at the size of the actual engine itself. And um, everything is kind of spaced apart really nice inside this engine bay. You can really get to things quite nicely if you really look at it. Um, it's just an easy engine to kind of get to and an easy engine to sort of work on. So it does sort of favor the Challenger if you're somebody who likes to turn wrenches in their driveway, much easier to, uh, to access a lot of the stuff on the Challenger. The next thing I want to talk about is kind of a subjective thing, but I have to admit when it comes to the Challenger, the Challenger is just very unique in the segment. The Challenger still sort of remains the only true muscle car out there on the market. You can kind of look across the board. This thing has kind of stood the test of time. It still retains a lot of that old school muscle flair uh, from way back in the day, back in like the 60s and the 70s. It is still kind of a modern throwback, if you will. So if you like that kind of, you know, the new school technology with sort of that throwback type styling, this is really the only way to go these days. So if you are a fan of the traditional muscle uh, car, there's really nothing that beats the Challenger. So even though the Mustang is fantastic looking, it's a nice looking car, um, you know, and there are a lot of really nice looking, what I would call sports cars, and that Mustang kind of fits that mold quite well. Uh, the Challenger is unique in its styling and uh, remains sort of the unicorn out there when it comes to muscle cars that you can still go and buy new. And it's pretty darn cool that it comes in all these trims, Scat Pack included. Now I'm in the interior of the 2020 Mustang um, GT, and it is a really nice, comfortable place to sit. Very neutral driving position, as I've mentioned you know, many times. Um, but this car does feel a lot smaller than the Challenger when you're in it. I mean, the seats feel more snug. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a lot closer to the uh, to the roof in this car. Um, just everything is is just more narrow. This isn't nearly as wide of a car. Um, just it's just a much smaller place to sit. And when you jump over into the Challenger, everything is just a lot more roomy in this car. Bigger seats, even the steering wheel is a little bit bigger. You can see all the room here between my head and the roof line. Back seats are bigger. So if you're a, uh, a person of larger stature or you just have wider shoulders or you just like more room, the Challenger is actually a more comfortable place to sit. It's an all-around bigger car. So um, if you're somebody who kind of likes a little bit more of an open feel, this does still kind of retain a little bit of a muscle or a cockpit type feel to it uh, just from a layout perspective, but you never feel like you're claustrophobic in a Challenger. You still feel like you have uh, a fairly adequate amount of room in this car. Not quite as much as the Charger, but certainly way more than the Mustang. So uh, definitely advantage on the Challenger side um, if you are somebody who likes a more roomy vehicle. One other thing that I would like to bring up is, uh, yes, now I do realize that the Challenger is um, is a heavier car. It's a bigger car. And um, there are some drawbacks to that. But when it comes to sort of ride quality, um, I feel like the Challenger, it just rides a little bit more smooth. I mean, there's something that's to be said for a car that's kind of bigger, heavier, longer wheelbase. Um, they just ride really nice. And for a really powerful um, muscle car, this thing rides great. Now, I do realize there are some trims of the Mustang where you can get the uh, magnetic ride um, and of course there are some trims of the Challenger as well where you can also get the uh, dynamic suspension modes uh, but in terms of just overall ride quality and how smooth they are um, I have to give the edge to the Challenger it's just a you know it's a, it's a heavier car it's a bigger car but uh, the ride is is really really nice in these cars so um, yeah definitely I give the edge to the Challenger on that one now, the last thing that I want to talk about, it's something obviously that I've brought up time and time again when you really compare these two cars. Now, what does the Challenger really do the best? The Challenger Scat Pack? Well, it's all of that low-end grunt and torque. And 
really, you know, the most usable power is really in the Scat Pack when you think about it, because you really do spend most of your time under about 80 miles an hour, at least most of us do, right? So to really uh, get what the Mustang has and kind of get that thing into its power band, you really have to kind of get up in the speed limit so where you can really let that uh, Coyote engine breathe. Well, when you talk about the Scat Pack, I mean, basically all that low end torque and punch, it's very usable power. And there's something to be said for that. Yes, I do realize that, um, you know, because of the weight and all that kind of stuff, yeah, the Mustang might be a little faster in the quarter mile in terms of ET and all that. But if you're just street driving, um, the Scat Pack being just a torque monster, it can blow the tires off pretty much whenever it wants to. And it puts a huge grin on your face. It's very usable power in the sense that you have access to all of it down low. You don't have to stretch it out to 90 mile an hour to really uh, reap the benefits of what this engine can do. Um, but like I said, it will light up the tires pretty readily. <laughs> See, it just makes you smile. Anyway, what I was trying to say is the instant power and instant torque that you get in this car. Um, it's very, very rewarding. Not that the Mustang isn't powerful and not that it's not fun. It's just kind of next level in terms of the low end punch. So it's a great thing to have. Well, that is about it for this one. So hopefully you agree with my assessment of some things that I actually like better about the Challenger Scat Pack over the uh, Ford Mustang GT. So just a few kind of things to consider if you're considering either one of these two cars, maybe just a little bit of education out there for you. So anyway, guys, it's been fun. Really enjoyed it. And I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.